and welcome to Between the Keyframes, where I discuss cartoons, animation, and all good things between. Today I want to discuss with you the incredible story of a Russian boy overcoming his fears, braving a frozen landscape, and hunting a ferocious wolf that has been terrorizing the forest near his home. Armed with nothing but a toy gun and his wits, he ventures out with his comrades to deal justice to this menacing beast. This is the story of Disney's 1946 classic, Peter and the Wolf. Now, as an illustration, I am here in the forest of Maryland, hunting the wolf myself. But this is America, and I'm doing this the American way. What I have with me here is a Springfield 1944 M1 Garand, chambered in .30-06 with a brand new civilian marksmanship walnut stock. This little red, white, and blue beauty can certainly put a hole in a wolf. So, Sasha, let's go hunting. What are you doing, Needle Noggin? It's right next to you. Use it! Nicholas D. Wolfwood from Trigun. Ugh. Now, I wonder what happens at the end of that. Stay tuned to the end of this video to find out. Now, before I jump into the review, I would like to say that I am very excited to share my first sponsor with you. For this video, I have partnered with CineLab. CineLab provides a whole host of services from film processing to film preservation, camera rentals, to film scanning, and even printing from digital to film. You may remember from my Mickey's Christmas Carol video that I hired CineLab to scan my 16 millimeter print of the film. They did such a fantastic job that it worked out a sponsorship deal. I also sent CineLab my 16 millimeter print of Peter and the Wolf, which you will see all throughout this review. So go to CineLab.com and check out their services today. In 1936, a Russian composer named Sergei Prokofiev was asked to create a symphonic tale for children as a way to introduce kids to the study of music. Sergei decided to blend storytelling with music by having a narrator tell the story and an orchestra would play different instruments for each of the character's themes. It took a few drafts to get the story right, but in the end settled on the tale of a brave boy capturing a wolf. Along with teaching music, it would also promote Russian virtues of vigilance, bravery, and resourcefulness, with the image of man overcoming nature. He called it Peter and the Wolf. The small cast of characters include Peter, his grandfather, a cat, a bird, a duck, three hunters, and of course, the wolf. Now, as I said before, each character will be played by a different instrument. Peter will be played by a string quartet, his grandfather by a bassoon, the cat by a clarinet played in a low register, a flute will play the bird, the duck by an oboe, the three hunters by kettle drums, and the wolf will be played by horns. The basic story of the symphony will go as follows. Peter lives in the forest with his grandfather, and one day leaves the house alone into a clearing. There, a bird and a duck were being stalked by a cat. Peter noticed this and promptly shouted a warning, causing the bird and duck to flee to safety. Peter's grandfather saw that he went out alone and scolded him because a wolf prowls this area. Peter flashed defiance, which promptly gets him grounded. Soon after, the wolf emerges from the forest and chases the cat, bird, and duck. The cat and the bird make it to safety, but the poor duck gets swallowed whole. Seeing this, Peter escapes the house and manages to tie up the wolf just as the hunters emerge from the forest. They were tracking the wolf and were surprised to see that Peter had captured it. In the end, everyone paraded the tied up wolf all the way to the zoo, with the grandfather in tow, feeling disappointed that Peter disobeyed him, but was happy that he caught the wolf. In 1938, Sergei traveled to Los Angeles and had a chance to perform Peter and the Wolf to none other than Walt Disney himself. So impressed was he that Walt decided to make it into an animated film and release it in 1940. Those plans, however, would have to be put on hold due to the start of World War II. As we learned in my series on wartime cartoon propaganda, Disney would put his full animating force behind producing training and propaganda films. From 1942, after the release of Bambi, to 1945, anything released by Disney would be geared towards the war effort. 
But once the war was over in 1946, the very first theatrical release was an anthology of several short cartoons called Make My Music. And one of the main attractions was finally Peter and the Wolf. Disney's version kept fairly faithful to the premise of the original symphony, but added some elements to help engage the audience to make it a bit more of a well-rounded story. So let's get into it. We open up to a melody of Peter's theme song. In the first part of the opening credits, we learn that this film was directed by Clyde Geronimi, an Italian immigrant who has a long and storied career as an animator and a director. He was one of the directors on Bambi, Sleeping Beauty, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. But forget all that. More importantly, he was director during the first season of the 1967 Spider-Man cartoon, which included the episode titled Double Identity, which means he gave us this. So thank you, Clyde. Thank you. We then settle down to a beautiful snowy painting, but we are introduced to the best part of this film, apart from the music. The narrator, Sterling Holloway, his voice is iconic. You will probably recognize him as the voice of Mr. Stork in Dumbo. Here is a baby with eyes of blue, straight from heaven right to you. The Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone's mad here. Ka in the Jungle Book. Ooh, who does he think he's fooling? Help this little lad. Ooh, he gives me the shivers. Or, most famously, the Winnie the Pooh. Oh, yes. Time for my stoutness exercise. Up, down, up. To me, though, his delivery in Peter and the Wolf is his best work. He is so engaging in his storytelling that you forget that none of these characters actually have their own voice. He has to deliver the joy, sadness, suspense, and fear all by himself, and he carries it perfectly. After the credits, we are treated to a fantastic introduction with the characters in the silhouette and the instruments that will be playing them. I love the animation in this sequence, and you can tell the animators had a lot of fun designing their movements to mimic their instrument. Like how the dog plods along to the way an oboe sounds, or how the bird fidgets with a fluttering flute. It's such a clever introduction. The screen suddenly darkens, and we dive into a snowy, scary forest. The sound of the horns ominously plays in the background, as the tension builds to reveal our villain, the wolf. Wow. He scared the snow away. From the wolf's stalking perspective, we move towards Peter's house, where we see our protagonist step out into the world, determined to capture the wolf. Snatched from the jaws of victory, Peter's grandfather scolds and disciplines him, reminding him of how dangerous the wolf is. However, Peter's imagination gets the better of him, and he sneaks out of the house while his grandfather is sleeping by the fire. It's at this moment I have to point something incredible out about the amount of detail the animators put into this film. From here on, you will see that every single step the characters take results in a snowy footprint. Just look at all the clips throughout my review, and you will see that every time a character steps in the snow, the snow deforms around the foot and leaves a distinct and unique footprint when they step away. And an animator had to draw each and every footprint. Not a single one is the same. It's such a little detail, but it just adds so much to the thick snowy atmosphere to the film. I just love it. Now we get introduced to Peter's new friends. First is Sasha, and an inquisitive Sasha, and excited little bird. He is thrilled to tag along for the hunt Everything. and show the wolf what for. Come on, let's go. Suddenly, the shadow of the wolf appears, only to reveal that it is just our next friend, Sonia the Duck. Look at those footprints! Just awesome! Okay, moving on. Sonia sleepily greets Peter and tries out his gun to hilarious effect. Now Sonia wants to join the party. Lastly, Ivan the Cat comes on the scene, pouncing at Sasha, hoping to make a meal of him. Peter soon puts Ivan in his place, though, and the merry band depart to bag the wolf. Our heroes are in the dark part of the forest now, and we begin to hear the horns signaling to the audience that the wolf is close, closer than they think. Ivan stumbles onto the wolf, freaking out and blinding Peter. Sonia gets knocked down. 
and stumbles in a dizzy spell. The wolf, in a long, drawn-out scene, tries to eat Sonia, but is saved by the narrator. W-O-L-F! The wolf circles around our party and growls at Peter, who, when finally getting confronted with his nemesis, realizes that this is very different from what he imagined, but still manages to get off a shot and pop the wolf in the nose. As expected, the gun is ineffective. And now we have our chase scene. Tragedy strikes as Sonya is eaten by the wolf. Our heroes who manage to hide in the tree are heartbroken as they watch Sonya go to heaven. Man, when I saw this scene as a kid, I almost cried. It was so sad. Even the duck is sad to go to heaven. Sasha now tries to exact revenge for what the wolf did to Sonya. He flies down to the wolf and fights him. You start to think that the bird's actually getting the upper hand in this fight until he trips and falls into the wolf's mouth. Dramatically, it seems that the bird is about to get eaten, but he manages to escape and keep fighting. But soon, Sasha gets too cocky and injures himself, again causing Peter and Ivan to come to his rescue. Stuck between a wolf and a hard fall, Peter and Ivan are in serious trouble now. Sasha, having recovered off screen, fetches the help of some nearby hunters. Wait a minute, I'll show you. W O L F. Wolf. Wolf! They arrive on the scene to discover the 100th misdirected the film. I mean, they discover that Peter and Ivan have been eaten by a wolf. But surprise, Peter and Ivan are just fine and somehow manage to tie up the wolf off screen. So the wolf is captured and paraded through town and everyone is happy except the wolf. Meanwhile, Sasha is sad and misses Sonia dearly. But what's this? Another misdirect? Indeed. Sleepy Sonia managed to escape the wolf's jaws after all. And is all right. Everyone is happy again except the wolf. I love this film. Every time I watch it, I just want to wrap up in a blanket, sit by the fire with a hot chocolate in my hands. The music is incredible. The animation is top notch. The painted backgrounds are beautiful to look at. And the mood and the atmosphere are perfect. There's a few too many misdirects for my taste, but it's a small little nitpick for such an incredible achievement. Anyway, I'm sure you're dying to see what happened to me at the end of my wolf hunt. Did the wolf get me? Did I kill the wolf? Is this a misdirect? Let's see. Ugh. Well, I've bagged the wolf and saved the town. I'm Justin Owen, and this is Between the Keyframes. Thank you so much for watching.